Today we're gonna to look at a pretty creative digit sum problem. And so this is one of the problems given in a magazine called the Mathematical Gazette. So let's see what we've got. So for each three digit number, which we'll denote by capital N, define the function f by f of n is the sum of the hundreds digit of n and the square of the tens digit and the cube of the ones digit. And then, well, our goal is to determine all n that are really fixed points of this function, but that means that f of n is equal to n. And maybe just as an example, we could look at f of 123. So it's gonna be the hundreds digit plus the square of the tens digit plus the cube of the ones digit. So let's see, what does that end up being? We have 27 plus four is 31 plus one is 32. So kind of obviously 123 is not one of these fixed points, but it at least gives us a feel for how this function works. That being said, maybe before we dive into the main solution, let's look at a smaller version, version which could maybe give us some insight to the tricks that are gonna be used in the bigger version. And what do I mean by a smaller version here? Well, let's push this from a three digit number to a two digit number. And let's say it's gonna be the sum of the tens digit and the square of the ones digit. So everything is just shifted a little bit. Okay, so maybe we would set n equal to 10a plus b, where a comes from the set one to nine, and b comes from the set zero to nine. a here cannot be equal to zero because we want this to be a real two digit number. And if it were zero, we would have a one digit number. Again, we're doing a smaller version. We'll get to our three digit case in just a second. Okay, so now observe that our function here, f of n, will take a and add it to b squared. Just by the way that we're translating this to our smaller version, like I said before, the sum of the ones digit and the square of the tens digit. But now we want this to be equal to n, but notice that n is 10a plus b. So if you look right here, we've got f of n equal n, but that's going to force this equation right here, this equation uh, involving a, b, and we've got b squared in there. Okay, so what do we think the strategy is? Well, perhaps we'll move this b over and we'll see that we have b squared minus b is equal to 9 times a. So this is like kind of solving A in terms of B, but we're not really all the way solving because we don't want to divide by nine. And that's because we don't want to get outside of the integers here. But this left-hand side kind of factors in an obvious way. Observe that this left-hand side is B times B minus one, and we have that as nine times A. And importantly is that this nine times a is a multiple of nine. But the fact that nine times a is a multiple of nine means that b times b minus one is also a multiple of nine. Now, at this stage, what we'll do is we'll take all possible values of b and we're gonna see which ones give us multiples of nine when we plug them into this type of expression. Okay, so let's say here we've got b, and now we have b times b minus one, which shouldn't be too bad. It's just the number times the previous number. Okay, so maybe b is gonna go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and finally nine. And probably not surprisingly, we didn't really need to make this table, is that nine times nine minus one is 72. And in fact, this over here, this last one is the only one that gives us, well, a real shot at a solution. 
the case when b is equal to 9 because that on that list is the only multiple of 9, which again is pretty clear by the fact that we're doing b times b minus 1 and 9 is the square of a prime, but that's kind of neither here nor there. Okay, so now if we have b equals 9 into perhaps uh, this equation right here, we have 72 equals 9 times a, which tells us that a is equal to 8. But that gives us a single solution, and that single solution is 89. And what you can check is if you do this process right here on 89, you'll have 8 plus 9 squared, 8 plus 81, which is 89. So it does satisfy our simpler rule here. Okay. So now let's maybe jump into the main problem. Okay, so now jumping into the solution of our bigger problem where we have a three digit number and the sum of a number, a square, and a cube, let's see how this goes. So we're gonna start pretty similarly to what we did before. So let's write n as 100 times a plus 10 times b plus c. And here we have a is between uh, one and nine and then b and c are both between 0 and 9. Just based off the fact that we need to have a three-digit number and these represent digits. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's notice that by our rule right here, we have a plus uh, b squared plus c cubed is equal to f of n which our goal is to solve when is that equal to n, which is in fact equal to 100a plus 10b plus c. And so that gives us this equation from the extreme left and right hand sides that hopefully we can work with. Okay, so we're gonna do kind of a similar thing to what we did before. We're gonna take the highest degree term in this case, it's the c cubed, and we're gonna get that on one side of the equation. So it's gonna go something like this. We'll have c cubed minus c is equal to, well, we can move this a to the left-hand side, giving us 99a. We'll move the b squared to the, I should have said right-hand side, and we'll end up with 10b minus b squared. Might as well write that as 10, or b times 10 minus b. So something like that. And now uh, let's maybe go ahead and factor this as c times c minus 1 times c plus 1. And now we're going to make this quick little subclaim inside of our solution. And that claim is b is not equal to 0. And so how does the proof of this go? Well, we're going to do it by contradiction. So if b is equal to 0, then that tells us we have c times c minus 1 times c plus 1 is equal to 99 times a, which in fact is equal to 11 times some number. I'll just put a box for the number there. So importantly, that means that this c times c minus 1 times c plus 1 is a multiple of 11. But since we've got uh, consecutive three consecutive numbers being divisible by an odd number, we, mean, we know that one of those has to be divisible by 11. And that's because if you look at the GCD pairwise of any two of those numbers, the GCD is either 1 or 2. Okay, so again, that means that one of these must be divisible by 11. So we have 11 divides c, uh, 11 divides c minus 1, 11 divides c plus 1. But now let's observe in all of those cases, we'll get that c is either 0 or it's bigger than or equal to 10. And of course, it can't be bigger than or equal to 10 because it's supposed to represent a digit. Well, and it also can't be equal to 0 because we're already in the case when b was 0. And if b and c were 0, we would see that a would have to be 0. But then we would just have 0. So anyway, that kind of discussion that I did out loud says that we do not reach a solution via this method. Okay. So now let's hone in on this expression right here, this b times 10b minus 1, 
And now let's go ahead and see the value of this expression. So I'm gonna make a chart. We've got input B and output B times 10 minus B. And well, by the symmetry of this expression, I only have to determine its values for B from zero to five. And I don't need to do zero by the claim that's above. So we'll have inputs one, two, three, four, five, and let's see the outputs. So here we'll have an output of nine, and then next up we'll have 16, and then you can calculate the next one to be 21, and then 24, and then finally we have 25. I guess an important takeaway here is the size of this expression. So observe that this means that 10B, uh, so we've got 10B minus B squared, well that's in fact bigger than or equal to nine, and it's less than or equal to 25. But let's build that into this entire left-hand side, and well, observe that this uh, 99 times A is bigger than or equal to 99. So adding 99 to all of these parts, we'll have 99a plus 10b minus b squared is sandwiched between, let's see, 108, that's 99 plus nine, and well, let's see, 99 plus 25 is gonna be 124. Okay, so we've got this nice, inequality bound for the left-hand side and thus also for the right-hand side. That being said, we're running out of room, so let's see where we can go from there. Okay, so here's where we ended up. Given our condition that we need n to be f of n, we got this equation, c times c minus one times c plus one is equal to 99a plus b times 10 minus b. And then through some inequality arguments, we determined that that right-hand side had to be bigger than or equal to 108, but the right-hand and the left-hand side are equal to each other. It's an equation, so that means that this left-hand side, c times c minus 1 times c plus 1, also has to be bigger than or equal to 108. But now we can do a pretty similar thing to what we did before, calculate some values, and get possible values for c. So first of all, let's notice that this c times c minus one times c plus one will be increasing as long as we're, well, a bigger than or equal to one for sure, which are the allowable values of c. So notice that c equals zero is really not allowed. c equals one is not allowed because those are both gonna, zero that out and give you something less than 108 for sure. So, you know, maybe we really just need to look at the values where c is equal to two, c is equal to three, c is equal to four, c is equal to five, and so on and so forth. And what you'll see is that you'll get numbers like this, six, 24, 60, the next one is 120, and we can in fact stop at 120 and we can do that because this expression or this combination of c, c minus one and c plus one will be increasing. And so that means that as long as c is bigger than or equal to five, we will achieve something bigger than or equal to 108. So let's maybe just point out that all of that tells us that c has to be bigger than or equal to five. And really, from that point, we're just gonna break it into some cases. So let's do case number one. And the case number one will be C equals five. So if we've got C equals five, let's go ahead and plug that into this equation right here. We have 120 equals 99A plus B times 10 minus B. Okay, but now, what we can check is that that's gonna imply that A is equal to one. I think that's pretty clear because notice if A is equal to two, we are larger than 120. So, well, A has to be one because that's the only whole number that is less than two. Okay, so we get A is equal to one and that's gonna give us this new equation. So moving the 99 over, which will be 10B, 
Yeah, 10b minus b squared equals 21. And in fact, that's solvable. And you can solve that fairly easily. Perhaps we would move stuff around and factor it. We would have uh, b squared minus 10b uh, plus 21 equals zero. So we have b minus seven times b minus three equals zero. So that tells us that b is equal to seven or b is equal to three. Okay, but now let's see what we've got. We have c is five, we have a is one, and then we have these two possibilities here, both of them giving us solutions. So we've got some solutions over here. Maybe we'll insert them into a box. We have this number, let's see, it's gonna be 175, and this other number 135. Those are gonna satisfy our condition. Okay. So now, maybe before we finish, you might say, well, there are a bunch of cases to check, but I think all of them are pretty similar. That'll leave them as homework. Let's maybe do one more case before we stop, and that'll be uh, perhaps uh, the case, I'll call it two, but we'll take the case when C is equal to nine. Okay, so what is that gonna give us? Well, if C is equal to nine, will in fact get 99a plus uh, b times 10 minus b is equal to uh, 720. So again, that's what you get for this if c is equal to nine. But now by the inequality that we had for b times 10 minus b, recall that that was between, let's see, it was nine and 25, we can boil this down to a must be equal to seven. So smaller than seven, and because of the maximum size of this b times 10 minus b, you won't achieve 720. And then if a is nine, well, you're too big. This uh, 99 times a is, you know, kind of clearly larger than 720. Okay, so we get a is equal to seven, but that's gonna give us this equation uh, pretty quickly, but that's gonna cascade into the following quadratic equation for b, and that'll be uh, 10b minus b squared is equal to 27. And well, you can check that that doesn't have any integer solutions. Since that doesn't have any integer solutions, you don't get one of our solutions from this case. Okay, so we worked out two cases, one that brought us solutions and one that didn't bring us solutions. And I think from this outline, it might be a nice homework exercise to work out all of the rest of the cases and maybe post in the comments uh, which other solutions, if any, you get. And that's a good place to stop.